Have you ever wondered how polar bears can handle the extreme cold of the Arctic? On a typical day, Arctic temperatures can be as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius. That's really cold. And what about camels? How can they survive in the heat of the Sahara Desert, where it sometimes reaches 50 degrees Celsius? It's because these animals have adapted to their harsh environments. However, like other mammals, the polar bear and the camel can only exist in a certain range of conditions. But there are much smaller creatures that can live in far more extreme environments. One example of an amazing survivor is the tardigrade. Nicknamed the water bear, this tiny organism is less than a millimetre long. Tardigrades can handle temperatures from minus 200 degrees Celsius to 151 degrees Celsius. They can survive despite a lack of water and oxygen. They can even survive in outer space. In 2011, scientists successfully sent tardigrades to the International Space Station on the Space Shuttle Endeavour. Apart from the tardigrade, there are many varieties of even smaller single-celled microbes that scientists refer to as extremophiles. These microscopic organisms live in some of the harshest environments on the planet. Some live in places where there are very high levels of salt, like the Dead Sea. Others live within solid rock. Extremophiles like very hot or very cold environments. Strain 121, for example, is a type of bacteria with remarkable abilities to tolerate temperatures of 121 degrees Celsius. It lives on a volcanic vent at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and feeds on iron. Methanogens, on the other hand, thrive under 18 metres of Antarctic ice, where there is no light and no oxygen. Scientists find these organisms very interesting because they help us understand how life might exist on other planets. We're looking for worlds where the necessary elements for life can be found, explains astrobiologist Kevin Hand. We want to know what does it take for a world to be habitable. The Sahara Desert is a harsh environment with average temperatures of around 30 degrees Celsius and less than 10 centimetres of rainfall a year. Most animals cannot exist for long periods of time without water, but some creatures have adapted to this hot, dry habitat. The Gila monster, for example, has a remarkable ability to tolerate extreme heat and survives with very little water. It can go for months without food by storing fat in its tail. The Gila monster spends most of its time underground, hiding from the sun. Another remarkable desert animal is the meerkat. The strange dark circles around its eyes look like sunglasses. These circles help the meerkat to see clearly even in very bright sunlight. If you want to study extremophiles, you have to visit some of the harshest places on Earth. This is because if you remove these extremophiles from their harsh environment, they die. For example, some extremophile microbes live in hydrothermal vents near underwater volcanoes. In these areas, many metres below the surface of the sea, the water has become boiling hot. But extremophiles have adapted to the high pressure of this environment. They have probably thrived there for thousands of years. In order to study these microbes, 
scientists need to bring them to the surface of the sea. However, although the surface is a normal environment for humans, extremophiles cannot survive there. The low pressure above the water kills them. Scientists have now developed a special high-pressure container for these extremophiles. It keeps the microbes alive so that they can be studied in a laboratory. Weird and Wonderful Who says bizarre is bad? Let's have a look at some of the more bizarre animals on our planet. Some people may think that these remarkable creatures are not as beautiful as cute little kittens or majestic lions, but that doesn't mean that they're not just as important. These fascinating creatures have a lot to teach us about the natural world. The purple pig-nosed frog lives in India, and it is known for its strangely shaped nose. This rare animal was only discovered in 2003 because it spends most of its time in a burrow several metres below the ground. It eats a diet of worms and other bugs. For about two weeks every year, during the heavy rain of the monsoons, the pig-nosed frog comes out of its burrow to breed. Then it goes back inside for the rest of the year. The tongue-eating louse is a tiny 8 millimetre parasite that lives in oceans throughout much of the world. A parasite survives by living on and feeding off another creature. You can probably guess from its name that the tongue-eating louse eats tongues, specifically fish tongues. After it has eaten the tongue, the louse lives inside the fish's mouth. Amazingly, this doesn't kill the fish. Instead, the fish just starts to use the louse as a replacement tongue. It sounds frightening, but don't worry, the tongue-eating louse doesn't eat human tongues. We don't know much about the extraordinary blobfish because it lives in very deep waters between Tasmania and New Zealand. It doesn't have any muscles or bones, which is why it has such a strange appearance when it's on the surface of the sea. When it's in its natural habitat, it looks like a normal fish, because the pressure of the water pushes its body into shape. No one has ever filmed the blobfish in its natural environment. But scientists believe that the blobfish doesn't swim. Instead, it just floats in the water and waits for fish and other sea animals to swim into its mouth. The Pacific hagfish may be as unusual as many of the other animals you've learnt about, but it must be doing something right. The species has survived for over 300 million years. That's much longer than the dinosaurs. In fact, the hagfish is about as old as the first land animals ever discovered. And the hagfish has evolved very little over the years. It has survived because it can defend itself against predators. When in danger, the hagfish's body produces a slime that makes predators leave. It can produce as many as 18 litres of slime in just a few minutes. The hagfish isn't a predator itself because it doesn't have jaws or teeth, but it survives because it absorbs food through its skin. Hagfish swim as deep as 1,675 metres below the surface of the sea, and they eat the dead animals on the ocean floor. This is important for keeping the ocean clean. However, because hagfish also swim nearer the surface, fishermen often catch them. Now the species is endangered. Are you willing to help the hagfish?